Throughout human history, we have been captivated by the stories of the past, and it is in our nature to recreate and reimagine those characters that capture our interests and imaginations. Some characters lend themselves particularly well to adaptation, and can in a sense transcend from existing as a character to existing as the archetype of one. One such character is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes. First conceived of by Doyle in the midst of the Victorian era, the great detective remains enduringly popular and currently stands as the most adapted character in all of fiction. In our modern era, films such as Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes franchise and television shows like the BBC's Sherlock breathe new life into Doyle's characters, portraying them in a contemporary light yet still maintaining the essential integrity of the original stories. Perhaps the key to the undying success of Sherlock Holmes is that rare quality of extreme adaptability which enables him and his companions to be transplanted not just into other forms of media, but into entirely different contexts that enable new aspects of the original characters and stories to be explored, and that are able to appeal to a diverse array of audiences. A particularly evident example of this Sherlockian versatility is the recent BBC TV series Sherlock, which transplants the characters, stories and setting of the Victorian homes into the present day, yet anchors this contemporary setting with the familiarity of the character archetypes of Holmes, Watson and their companions. While many elements of the television adaptation are necessarily altered from the original text, from the use of mobile phones to the use of language, the show successfully transfers the characters into believably modern incarnations, and adds a contemporary twist to many of Holmes' adventures to connect with and engage the audience of today. For example, in the Sherlock episode Hounds of Baskerville, the terrifying glowing canine of Doyle's original Hound of the Baskervilles is replaced by a sinister military research base and an experimental hallucinogenic drug. Despite these alterations to the base text, the show is still built around the character of Sherlock Holmes, the flawed genius turned private detective. The show is still predominantly set in London, still features Holmes and Watson and their companions, and so, despite the fact that many of the ideas in the text have been altered from the original, the character archetypes remain essentially unchanged, providing a recognisable link for audiences to latch onto. But to understand exactly what the BBC's Sherlock and so many other texts like it are built on, we must look to the source. Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes adventures undeniably changed modern fiction, using a hugely successful serial format to portray a fascinating and unusual character, the sociopathic, heroin-addicted detective who is so familiar to us today. Sherlock Holmes is an enigma to even his closest friends, friends like Dr. John Watson, from whose perspective the original stories are told. The fact that the stories are narrated from Watson's perspective is important in the sense that Watson represents the reader, an ordinary person observing the methods of an extraordinary genius. And it is here where Conan Doyle's original works really do shine, where we can observe from an everyman's perspective the almost superhuman deductions of Holmes. The intellectual distance between Watson, who represents the audience, and Holmes is a constant theme in these stories, such as Watson's cry of excellent in surprise of an insightful deduction, to which Holmes simply replies, elementary. Our amazement at Holmes' abilities is made clear in Watson's writings, such as the line, Here I had heard what he had heard, I had seen what he had seen, and yet from his words it was evident that he saw clearly not only what had happened, but what was about to happen, while to me the whole business was still confused and grotesque. In the original Sherlock Holmes stories, we as an audience are not meant to relate to the great detective, rather we watch in fascination along with Watson as Sherlock unravels the most unsolvable of mysteries. However, the nature of modern adaptations of Doyle's initial stories have altered the dynamic between audience and Sherlock Holmes. Since the BBC adaptation appears on a television medium, Watson is no longer in control of our perception of the title character, meaning that Sherlock himself is able to directly connect with the audience. In the show, Sherlock's deductive methods are not merely outlined by a fascinated narrator, instead we see the clues as Holmes himself does, presented in an engaging visual format well suited to television. Sherlock, the TV series, allows the audience to get inside the detective's head in a way the original stories never could, enabling us to empathise with and understand how Sherlock functions as a character in a far more direct and personal manner, rather than from an observer's perspective. If anything, this makes Sherlock Holmes even more central to the TV series, a fact exemplified in the Sherlock episode The Hounds of Baskerville. Unlike the original Hound of the Baskervilles novel on which it is based, in which Sherlock Holmes is absent for a large part of the story, the TV episode features Sherlock throughout, highlighting the greater importance of Holmes's perspective in his modern un incarnation. So when Sherlock says, I'm not a psychopath, Anderson, I'm a high-functioning sociopath, we know that it is the real, unembellished Holmes who is talking, and from this we can draw out more of the true nature of the character Conan Doyle created over a century ago. 
So, in essence, although it is the astounding adaptability of Sherlock Holmes into almost any context that serves as the basis for his very numerous and very popular reimaginings, it is these adaptations that allow us to understand the Sherlock Holmes archetype in new and thought-provoking ways. In an even broader sense, though our continuing obsession with the great detectives, we can see a connection with the human fascination with the extraordinary that transcends all time and context. By observing audience reactions to Sherlock Holmes and his many incarnations since his inception, we can see that while different contexts and mediums portray him in the very varied and ever-shifting ways, our central fascination with him as a character has never faded, and it is almost certain that Sherlock Holmes will be as popular and relevant 150 years from now as he is today.